Hello friends, <clears throat> topic, invalidation, validation, universally, or childhood, parenting, slash, probably a whole lot of other things. So to move along in this video, I'm going to make it a point that I'm going to move along a little faster than I usually do with my comprehensive mind. Again, another argument with my mother on the phone. Again. This is probably argument 5,000 in my life span with my mother. My mother has been close to me all of my life. She's never gone away and then come back. My mother stays close with her family. And all of, our, all of her children stay close to my mother enough that we all get along. So we're on the phone, and we get into an argument, and I'm already in the mindset of things are going through my mind these last few years, <laughs> especially this last couple of weeks, where I've been thinking very strongly about my childhood, going over narcissistic videos, child abuse, whatever. And I've got a lot of things that I think about about uh, myself with. Oh, acceptance, blaming, looking within, accountability, running into a wall or running into a dead end and then having to backtrack with my feelings and with my thoughts. And, they, and there's gaslighting, and there's narcissism, and there's, and I'm looking up gaslighting, and I'm, I'm thinking, that could be skewed way beyond where, you, you know, you're the enemy, that's an attack. Or I might convey the truth to you. I know it's the truth. I figured it out that that is the truth. You are you've been deceived and I'm I'm sharing that with you hey look you've been deceived this is the truth that could be gaslighting cuz it's skewed in the way of I'm conveying something to you and then you're going to think oh gaslighting though they're trying to tell me what reality is and that is how circulation, media circulation, can be very conditioning, if you think about it. <laughs> Not to throw out your gaslighting word that you've been throwing around. I didn't hear gaslighting before, maybe two or three years ago. I never heard the word before, ever. And then now it's quite, quite used, especially in psychological type videos, mental health videos. So I'm on the phone with my mother. We get into an argument, and my mother's rage was just, bah, you know, I, I thought that her vocal cords was going to bust out of her mouth. And if I have, if I've not been on repeat with this over and over again with my mother, I'd, I'd be going through a lot more emotion. And I'm not really, because I've gone through this hoop so many times with my mother. And I really said to myself, you know what, I'm just going to talk to her about this. So I did. So I communicated, and I'll stress that, that communication is very important for anyone, with any other person, in any relationship. So I started going over everything with her. 
slowly. And she was kind of quiet for very long amounts of time, which is unusual. Because she's usually wanting to break me, break in. I said, no, no, no. And I let her know, I said, you're an invalidating person. We all are, to an extent. No, I'm letting her know. I mean, from day one, birth out of her, she's invalidated. Basically, 95% of everything I've ever done, anything I've ever said. And both of my parents have been real good about this. And I think this is a part of control. I think this is a part of authority. Because uh, my father is an authoritative person. And my, my mother is as well, in her own way. Now, to be clear, I care about my parents, and I accept them for what they are, what they were born to be. And I don't think that a lot of people are that forgiving as I am. And that's a, a pain struggle, I suppose I'd put it that way. In between, where I'm constantly saying, should I do that? Is it okay to do that? Am I, am I torturing myself by forgiving? As I was raised to forgive, in a in a a thing that does have to do with my childhood being a hurt feeling things that I was pushed to do, things that I was having to be around that I didn't want to be around, that I expressed to them numerous times, even as a little child, that I didn't want anything to do with religion. And they, they would not listen to me. And the, the funny thing is, there's was some things years back where they said that it was a law thing now, that you couldn't make your child go to a, a religious thing. Well, you know, that's bullshit. What is there going to be a little five-year-old that calls up? Uh, hello? My parents are making me go to whatever. I don't think so. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, okay, little Jimmy. So anyways, let me get to a point. So I'm on the, I'm going on and on and on with talking with her, saying, hey, maybe go to a psychologist tell them about some of these things and maybe they can give you some pointers or they can talk to you a little bit about some of these things because I was talking to her I said when because she just went to take care of her mother to put her in, into a elderly home and sell her property and go through all that and I asked and she was there for eight days and I said did you get into an argument during those eight days with anyone Yes. Okay. More than one. Okay. And this is where you could say that's that's gaslighting. She could use that. That's gaslighting. If you're going to communicate with someone, anyone could say, well, that's gaslighting. Well, that's a bit of an issue. So this is where if you communicate with another person on any level, there's always going to be, am I manipulating this person? Am I condescending? Am I using this person? Am I wanting to mold or form this person? What if you don't communicate? Huh? What if you fear being that gaslighter or fear being narcissistic or fear being a person that can speak for themselves in a way that involves yourself with whom you're speaking to about them. It's a very sensitive thing because I, I know this myself. People have said things to me where they're saying, hey, what about that? What about that? And, and it, there's that attack. They're attacking me. I'm defensive, defense mode. Turtle shell, uh-uh, uh-uh, I'm not going to hear it, I'm not going to hear it. And then afterwards, you get to thinking about it yourself and say, yeah, okay, okay, 
I needed to listen to that person a little bit more. I understand the defense situation where we're not wanting to hear what other people have to say because usually people are just wanting to manipulate you, telling you what's best for you because it goes towards their interest and that's all there is to it. You know, if you're talking to a realtor that lives three doors down, they say, yeah, I don't know about your place over here. You sh maybe you might want to sell it or whatever. Yeah, maybe you think, well, you're a fucking realtor, dickhead. I'm not going to listen to you. You just want me to just plug you in real quick. I mean, that's a that's a, an extreme example. That's basically what I'm talking about. So as I'm going on and on and on with my mother on the phone, you know, after we get into a cat fight, as I put it, a little quarrel, where fears come in with me, where there's some kind of push and pull type thing. Oh, 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 oh. And fears going back and forth, and I hate that. It's a little cat fight thing. And I, she says, well, let me ask you something. What should I do? And I said to her, my answer is everything I've been saying to you for the last 10 minutes on the fucking phone. That's the kind of person that my mother is. It's the comprehension situation where she's constantly saying, you don't understand. And then, or she'll use, I don't remember that. Or, I don't understand. You don't understand. Those are the three basic things that she's always using as a defense block to keep herself away from outside intruders that want to fuck with her. And that's the way I look at it. She's protecting herself. I see a little girl in my mother that is still there. When I was maybe eight, I went down to that property that she just sold to... We all went down to visit my grandma on the one millionth vacation that we took at the time. And I, I was with my mother's sister's two daughters on a property that was next to the property next to my grandmother's. So my grandmother owned the property next door that her daughter lived in, and she had her two daughters... And she had two, she had two twins that were, autistic, schizophrenic, they both were shipped out as little boys to a, a place that, a hospital, a full-time hospital as little boys. And I was with these two girls, and they were screaming at each other, and slamming the door, punching the door. And then, in a split second, they would just be sitting there painting their nails. Uh-huh. Yeah, talking to me. And then, ten minutes later, they'd come out. Fuck you, bitch. Ba 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 Throwing their brushes at the door. Ba ba And then they'd go back in there, and then she'd come back. Okay. You want a, a snack or something? Okay. It's just super strange. And I identify this as an older age now, especially. And knowing my mother. Well, this is how my mother is. And bloodlines are telltale. If you look at your cousins and you look at... You, you can get a little idea. It's not going to be straight up. You can get a little idea. And that was one of the most bizarre interactions that I've had with any of my family ever in my entire life and I only spent maybe two hours with those people I've never seen them again I think I remember their names I've never seen them again and my twins the twins I remember my grandmother and my great grandmother were very protective of them and I would call one of them by both of the names. So I didn't remember one of their names, so I said that they were both the same name, and they would get pissed. 
They'd get super pissed off about that. I'm brushing my teeth, and one of the fellows comes in, looks at me, kicks me in the chest. I go into the into the bathtub, fall into my back on the, into the bathtub, looking at him, and he's doing some kind of Bruce Lee thing, and he just walks out. I don't know about you, that's that's an interesting vacation, that's an interesting visit. I didn't get that from any of my other family. This is my my mother's side. Now on my father's side, I go to my grandfather's house in the same he was born it two streets down from the house that he lived in when he died when he was 72. So the guy lived in the same area his entire life. He never moved out of that area ever. He lived in that same area his entire life, 72 years, within two streets. And when I went to his funeral with my, my family, my dad was talking to the neighbor and he said that he never had anything to do with that guy ever is the the deceased grandfather of mine other than him saying hi maybe once or twice out of 30 plus years to the neighbor across the street <laughs> to give you an idea of my bloodline it's, a, it's an interesting one and there's been a lot of belief system in my family my great-grandmother would do something where she would hold the... Uh, you probably know what this is. I don't remember. She would hold a... She would hold a metal thing over maps uh, for a mystical thing, so that way she could find oil, oil fields. And my... Come to find out, my mother was talking about all these things that my grandmother did. I never even knew about my grandmother was an entrepreneur. So my, my mother's side is always moving, always moving to do something. They were getting properties, they were doing everything. And as far as my mother knows, they never made anything off of it, which is probably a lie. <laughs> They're probably just cutting her out completely. And this last thing that she did is where she's getting the, 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 her severance, basically, or her inheritance. And there's probably a whole lot more that she doesn't even know about. And this is what people do to people such as my mother and myself, and people that are too kind in ways. Because her sister and her sister's daughter both said, Ah, eh, we don't want any of the money that comes from the the house that you sell while you're down here. Yeah, because they already got something from something else that's way more. <laughs> and I could bring this up to my mother, and that doesn't matter because she doesn't listen. And this is the thing that I want to get at. This is my main point, is the validation and the invalidation. And this is very important to convey to my viewers and my friends that are listening to what I have to say. If you don't dig, you're going to kind of just be in your own little area. And, hey, good for you if all you want to do is sit around and watch Harry Potter DVDs and read Harry Potter books and think that life is wonderful. I say nay to that 100%. There's a whole lot more. People are you know, pulling the fleece over your head every five seconds. People are, even your own family members. If you look a little deeper, always, maybe have a few more questions or maybe be a pain in the ass a little bit more, well, you'll be the brother or sister that gets a whole lot more than that person that was always eating shit for everyone else. Because my mother put that 
that property on sale and they sold it in four days. I said, I asked her, I said, yeah, so how did it sell? Yeah, it sold in four days. Four days. I understand the bidding system. So I said, you, you definitely could have got more. No, 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 no. And this is my mother. And this goes all the way back to my childhood. And I've mentioned before in a previous video how when I was a younger kid, I really wasn't, I wasn't really, my interests were not considered. So as strange as I was, I absolutely, my interests were of no value to either one of my parents. Either or. Anything that I did was questionable. Always. It, it was beyond invalidation. It was a... A strike down. A push down. So... I think about the narcissism thing and I think about my mother and my father both and how much they'll put in towards the giving portion and how much they'll take away from that. And I, I say that people give to take and it's, a, it's an investment, it's a business, it's an entrepreneurial method. Narcissism is too vague to me, so I, I gotta look at other things still. I mean it's a it's a it's a it's an interesting thought to look at the one sided position of one person that can definitely be skewed. Because my mother will give the shirt off the off of her back. I've seen my father do interesting things. I've seen him give loans to people that never paid it back, of course. I've seen I've seen both of them kind of buckle to pity, usually with money. I've seen my family doing quite a bit to uphold some kind of image that has to do with religion. I look at some real dark stuff from my childhood with both of my parents. I look at the aggressive point where the teenage years came around, watching my older brothers fighting with my parents and actually getting into a, a physical fight in the backyard with my, my brother and my father. And he was the golden child. And they got into it I wasn't there, actually, so to correct that, I didn't see it. I heard about it. I visualize it, though. And, you know, my, my younger brother fucked my dad up. <laughs> dad. I think he was... He went easy on him, though. He just did some wrestling type stuff, just threw him on his back, knocked the wind out of him, and fucked him up real quick. I mean, he was strong. He was lifting weights and everything. He was about 18. And they got into a confrontation. And, my, and my, if there's anyone in the family that's more placated than any of us, the siblings, it's my brother. The one that threw my father on his back and knocked the wind out of him and made a thing out of it.
You know, I hate that this is that this is a a story about me. Cause I'm I'm not really into the whole me 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 thing. I see truth in this, though. I think that if m more than myself, other people go through something s s vaguely similar to this. And if you're still listening to me, I think that that's, that is the scenario, because people have very short spans of attention towards who knows what, at least it's, if it doesn't have, if it doesn't have a true connection very fast with popular TV shows or whatever, they're out. So if you're still here, then you probably have gone through family things or some kind of Something that really bothers you. So when I was a kid, I was never really validated. Ever. Zero percent. And it had a lot to do with their moods, both parents. So if I've got, if I ever got, good boy, good boy, it was always for really stupid things, such as homework type crap. Good boy. They didn't have to think a whole lot about it. It's just, okay, little Joey, little Bobby, Susie, Carrie, they have an A on this paper. Good boy. Good boy. I got that from my parents. If it was something where I was creative or imaginative, it was nothing. Nothing. Zero. If it was an interest that they knew that I wanted, such as a birthday party, now I remember this, definitely. There was a birthday party that I had coming up, and my mother said, we were, we were in the parking lot, so we were at a, a, we were in a, we were already there. And she knew that there was something that she wanted because she wanted to show me off. And she said, hey, you're going to do this. I said, no, nah, I don't want to do that. And she said, do you want to have your birthday party tomorrow? And I sat there for a minute and I th thought about it. And I'm maybe eight, seven. And I thought about what I needed to do. I said, oh, okay, all right. And that was something massive in my childhood that I remember. She, she was giving me ultimatum. She had a, a, an extremely stupid reason for what she wanted. And then what, what turned out was the thing that she wanted I botched. So she beat the shit out of me, <laughs> publicly, kind of publicly. And I didn't purposely botch it. I just, it, it just happened the way it was. Well, I still got my birthday party. I still got what I wanted. I knew even at a young age that that was what she was asking me to do was something that I wasn't going to be able to do. Probably both ways consciously and subconsciously I could discern even that far back and you know she beat the shit out of me a lot so it's not really a A massive thing. It's just I definitely remember that one. My mother's needs were always pertinent. They were always at front and center with my father, my brothers, 
and my any knowing of any people that were ever around ever if there was ever, ever any friends which there wasn't my mother and my father never had any friends and if they did they fucked it up when they came over badly So anytime I ever was expressing anything or expressing an idea as an adult, there's invalidation. No, no, honey. And I'm going to bring that up. My mother always says, no, honey, no. no. And I'm clearly looking at her and thinking, that is extremely stupid what she's fucking saying. And she'll say, no, honey. So I just, the only thing that I get is contradiction. So I'm right, or not right, or 80% right, and all I'm getting is 100%, no, no, honey, no. And that goes all the way back to my first memory. And I never had validation. Never, had, never, never, never. And I didn't have it from my father either. And the only validation I had from either my mother or my father was an in-between validation that had to do with fucking over the other parent. So if my, if my parent wanted to throw me one direction to gain on their end, it would be through using me. I don't know about my other brothers, it was me. So every other goddamn day, it was my parents fighting and arguing, and slamming doors, and saying, you asshole, fucker, blah, 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 slamming doors, and then watching them three hours later kissing. Oh, I love you, I love you. Tell me how that's not going to fuck with your head. Tell me how that's not going to fuck with your, your existence as a human being. <laughs> I consider it friction, and I consider it a a burden on my life because I've it messes with my reality towards things. How people can be off and on and attacking and defensive, and the way my parents went back and forth, and the fact that they didn't get a divorce. Interesting too. I don't even know if you will even think that I'm telling the truth that they were fighting so much, so often. And as they're fighting, I say something, boom, boom, and they gotta grab me, boom, and they gotta fucking get in my face and shit. And then whenever my dad was doing anything, my mother was just poof, gone. She didn't exist, you know? So it's real strange. How, how whatever the fuck they were thinking, it was just justifications or just getting by with some stupid reasoning inside of their mind. To relate with others, there's... A lot of people out there that have been punched in the face by their parents, kicked around, manipulated, told what's what, what's good for them, no, you're going to do this. I think about Charles Bukowski, the poet, the, the book writer. Sometimes he had poetry, sometimes he just wrote about things that were happening with him at his post office that he was employed by. I think about some of the things that he was talking about. And I was listening to an audiobook that he had, and it, all these memories started to come through, and it was not pretty. So I, I connected with the guy. The guy shared something with me, and it was 
dark. <laughs> I got something dark from listening to something that was dark. So I was digging. And this is something that my mother doesn't do. She won't, she won't listen to those types of things. She won't listen to me. She won't listen to fucking anything. She's basically incomprehensive is the way I put it. She became a nurse, an RN that she was real proud about. As she neglected me. Because she had to put quite a bit into doing this. Because she doesn't have much comprehension towards anything in life. And I remember she was bawling because she would get a B. She was really hard on herself. Because she got a fucking B. To just get into some kind of career type thing. And here I am just playing my video games, playing my video games. Did you do your homework? Uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, she's not going to check on it. Hey, Mom, I'm going to ride my bike around. Okay, call us from wherever you are. I never did. Because she didn't give a shit. I just rode around. Went wherever I want. And then just showed up. Be back before the sun goes down. Uh-huh, okay. And I just come back whenever I want. You didn't even be... Uh-huh. Because I didn't exist. I was irrelevant. I was just a fucking lemon. I'd watch the hours upon hours of the cultivation on, towards my other brothers. And all the special treatment they'd get. And I never got any of that. None of it. Zero of it. It was just... I was who I was, and they just had to deal with who I, that, that, that's what they made. Uh-oh. Oh, fuck, we got this thing now? Well, shit. And you might say, oh, well, that's a kind of a shitty attitude to have towards that. Well, that's me relating my feelings. So that would be you invalidating what I'm saying. And I'd call you a fucking asshole. i seen all kinds of cluster A, cluster B... I still don't know what any of that is. Maybe one day, huh? What I do know is that ever since day one, I've been a burden to my family. The way they say my name, the way they portray me in a public setting, or how it's essential in a wolf pack setting to cut me down. It's always been apparent. I've heard other people talk about this too. And usually there's deep, deep issues with their lives. I've been very forgiving of my family. I've been very forgiving towards my, all of my family. And probably the most understanding person of all of my family has been my younger sister, which is interesting because she's my younger sister. She looked, she's looking up towards what she has in family to cling on to in this family that I'm describing. So let's go over some of the bull points in my family. One, authoritative positions socially. Cult Religious cult upbringing. Two. Three. A strong dependency between both spouse, mother and father, with massive fighting arguments all the time. Four. Massive movement from my mother. Moving things around every five seconds. Vacations all the time. I've got to go here. i got to go there. i gotta, I got to move the couches around. i got to move this. i got to move that. On vacations. Making the bed for room service. <laughs> Cleaning up everything tidy for room service. Being up 
your ass every five seconds about everything. Just do this, do this, do this. And I'm, and I've got to portray that my mother was doing this and bothering my father so much that he was stressed out. And he's not a person that can hack stress real well. And my mother being aloof or in denial every five seconds is not going to say, oh, I'm stressing out my husband every five seconds. No, she's the type of person that's going to get on top of that because she's more of a dominant type person. She'll portray herself as a as a, a victim. She's not a victim. She is the energy. She's constant. She's nonstop, obliterating. It's going to be this. It's going to be this. We're in a hotel room. Where do you want me to put this? Where do you want me to put this? Where do you want me to put this? I mean, completely fucking annoying. The whole time. Consider that... Every day for however many years until I was to an age where she was, there was some distance between me and her. And I'm still forgiving of her. A lot of people, I don't think that they would, they'd hack this. They'd be gone. They'd be way, way, way far away from this person. If there's any penetrating her mind at all, it's going to be through lying to her because she's she eats it, lies up. Thus her attraction to cults, her attraction to stupid Fox News or whatever it is. She loves being deceived. She loves fallacy and she'll suck on it all day. She'll do the stupidest thing possible. And my father's bothered by this because he's the most critical person that you can possibly perceive. So make the connections here. Isn't this an interesting thing? You've got a person <laughs> who will eat up crap and then you have a person that's extremely critical. You have dependency Massively, both ways. And you can throw kids in between for use. Kids are a good way to use a dependent relationship, in my opinion. A go-between. Oh, your mother. Your father. Your mother. Your father. And it goes back and forth, it goes back and forth. Go tell your mother, blah, blah, blah. And then mother says, your t go tell your father, blah, blah, blah. And then you're, you're, cross, you're a medium, you're cross-communicating for 18 years until you're doing things that are deviant and bad. And then it's, hang on a second, how come you're doing this? And then they don't have any leverage anymore. And then it's just, what the hell, what, you know, forget it. The arrogance, the ignorance keeps going. It's, so, oh, well, fuck it then. We'll just have to pray. We'll just have to pray to good old whoever. If your parents... Or anyone in your adult life. Don't listen to what you have to say. It's frustrating. Why are we going to have anything to do with other people that don't listen to what we have to say? And that be about everyone. I think that shows how much we're divided. We don't listen to each other. My parents are an extreme because I've been in situations where I've where people listen to me and I say, fuck, man, I didn't get that from my parents and I've got this from a stranger right now. I mean, we're talking zero. I never got that from my parents. I 
connect that to neglect. And then other things from my childhood that are sheer neglect. Well, then it, it it's accumulated. It's a it's an appreciation of neglect. It's not easy, 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 easy to talk about these things. Cause it's, I it makes me vulnerable. It makes me. It doesn't make me super strong with lies and going around seeking feeble people so that way I could just get what I want in life. Nah, I'm just conveying. I'm conveying to a a brother or sister out there that can relate to what I'm saying and that's possibly gone through something similar to what I've gone through. And I don't doubt that there's a lot of people out there that have gone through something similar to what I've gone through. And I'm not I'm not savvy on the narcissist thing because I want to know more. So I'm I'm pinpointing certain things about myself, my my behaviors and also too with my family. All of them. They're always under the microscope. It's questionable. Not the not good enough syndrome. Which I have very badly. I'm I'm a traumatized, sensitive type born person. And so same thing I was saying to my mother was that she's not that person. She's not someone that can be so impressionable. I am. I remember everything. She does not. That's the difference between my mother and myself. And I'm talking extreme polar differences. You know, I'm, I, I even brought it up to her that she could watch someone die and bludgeoned shotgun to the head and not be affected by it. And you might think that that's some kind of exaggeration. No, it's not. That's my mother. She's the perfect person for ER room. I'm not. I'm a sensitive, I was born sensitive. And I'm, I'm it, circumstantially I was born in a situation where I'm that person and my mother is not. Extreme polarity. And so there's the friction from a, a non-emotional explanation or conveyance. And I can go on with her on the phone and you know, try to get through to her, not really mold her, or craft her in the way I want her to be. I could go through all these things with her and she still will come out through the other end. I don't know what you mean. I don't understand. She's got these cliche things or this rhetoric or whatever that she uses. And it just keeps her where she's at. She's safe and sound wherever she's at. Well, wherever you're at, mother, have a lovely life. Because it's not where I give a shit. <laughs> it's a... It's, a, it's an invalidating feeling, at least. And I, I really can't say that she does it intentionally. It's just, it's just a, a circumstantial situation. It's not easy to convey these things to the public. And why do I do it? Well... Maybe I value communication. And I really do value the, the thought that there's possibly someone out there that will relate. And it will, it'll, some of the information will bring some kind of peace in what they can gather and put together and then a release of some pain.
release of some feelings or emotions. Because that's basically what we've got to get out of us. We've got to release something so we can go on. We've got to be... We've got to be... We've got to be give and take. We've got to be sharing care, harness, and relentless. We've got to be able to do all of it. Because there is some... There's some friction over here. There's some... There's some loving buzz over here. There's some... Just pure hate in another corner. And we, you know, we can come together, I think. I've yet to find many people that gather much on that. Mostly I gather that people are me, 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 me. This is me. This is me. Me, me, me. I had a turkey sandwich today. Cool, huh? Yeah, who gives a fucking shit? I don't give a fuck that you had a turkey sandwich today. I don't care. Oh, I bought a Lexus today. Check out my Lexus. I don't give a fucking shit that you bought a Lexus. I got a Lamborghini. I don't give a fuck, dude. I don't care that you got a, a Lamborghini. Who cares? If I want to look up a Lamborghini, I'll just look up some stupid Lamborghini thing. I don't need to I don't need to look at some meat sack sitting inside of a Lamborghini. I don't need that. My birds have been quiet. That's interesting. <laughs> They're just chilling. All right. Well, point number one, validation. Point number two, invalidation. Point number three, what are you going to do about it <laughs> with the family? And point number four, eh, self-preservation which is narcissistic, or gaslighting, which is kind of stupid. Not to throw it out. It's probably something. There's probably something about it. I'm not finding it. I want to know what I got to do to get along with my parents, with my friends, with my friends, and my friends, family's friends, to realize that when I wake up, I'm alone. When I go to sleep, I'm alone. When I do anything I'm alone when I make these videos and I send it out I'm alone I'm not with someone I'm not sitting at a table rating reviewing craft beers I'm not I'm not making videos about my new walk that I made that I'm gonna fry chicken in I, I'm not making a video about a, a super hot BMW I just conjured up. No. I'm, I'm just talking about feelings, and I'm talking about emotions, and I'm talking about what we've got to go through as people that were born different from a whole lot of other people, whatever you're labeled as. Well, the best to you, whoever you are out there, if you listen this far, the best to you, just because it's a nice thing to say, and I want it for you, and maybe we can look beyond our childhood and our parents and 
see great things in life. See seagulls flying in the sky or maybe a blue jay lands on your fence one morning. Well, that's a pretty sweet thing. So maybe we can get onto that kind of stuff. Still have to go through the harsh stuff, though, to feel good. Got to go through these things. You go through these things with psychologists, too. You go through these things with friends that you don't care about, so you just spill out and say, eh, blah, 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 blah. Hang on a second. If, if I'm not in tune with caring about the people I'm around, that I why the fuck am I around these people in the first place? Things have got to get, the things have got to get more smooth. And things got to get more to the point where we can really enjoy our company. And I'd love to know who those people are because I'm not finding them. I'm just not finding people that I can be sound with, that I can nourish myself to them. They're, they're, you know, things are not good enough for them either. They're just distracted by five hours of TV every night or whatever they got to do. It's just, it seems uphill way too much. And it's too apparent why people just want to leave life. I'm looking beyond that. You know, this is a survival thing, I suppose, and, and a, an instinct thing where I've got to survive. And so I make a video and say, hey, look, we got to survive, people. Well, if you had an upbringing that didn't have anything to do with any of this and you still listen to what I said up to this point you're probably in denial <laughs> so look at your family look at your life look at yourself look at everything under the microscope everything is a question so Arriva Dirce